What is going on everyone? Have you ever just wanted to get away from people? A lot of us do. That's why we go camping, hiking, take Unisom, and sometimes quit showering for weeks at a time, all in an attempt to get away from other human beings. Some people want to do this on a full-time basis and move way out of town. The further, the better those people see it. That's how they like it, and that's fine. It's not just preppers, hermits, and people avoiding lawyers. It's everyday people that daydream about this. This is a very popular video series on this channel, in part because it's a very interesting subject. Like I said, people daydream about it. And I also had two redhead girls from a secluded town in Wyoming as the thumbnail on the last one. That didn't hurt. Today's video is the third video in this series. This list won't be filled with towns that you need a mule and three days of water to get to. This list is comprised of user suggestions. Ever since the first secluded town video, I've gotten comments and emails about how I missed one. I always seem to miss one, people say. I sort of realized from the comments, distance isn't the only thing that makes a place secluded. Some people feel since nobody ever visits their small town or their village or whatever, it's secluded. Maybe it's like 20 miles down the interstate from some city, but you have to get off the interstate and drive 10 minutes into the desert to the town that really has nothing. So to the people of that town, they're secluded. So I filtered through the comments and came up with this list. This list is in no particular order. Some of the locations may not statistically be a town per se. They may have like under 100 people or something like that. After you watch this video and know of one that should have been on the list, let me know in the comment section below. We'll make another video. All right, so let's check out what the subscribers said in my top 10 most secluded towns, the subscriber version. Number 10, Thurman, West Virginia. This first one came from a longtime subscriber, Andy Sumner. She asked me on Twitter what this week's videos would be, and I told her about this one, and she said she had a really good one. I told her to put it in the comment section, and yeah, she was right, it was a good one. Thurman, West Virginia isn't as much the distance that makes it secluded as nobody goes there. It was built on a hillside of a river valley, and at its peak in 1930, Thurman had a population of 460. The New River flows right by town. That's what's called the New River. These days, it has five. Nothing Nothing happens here but the Amtrak rolling through town a couple times a week. It does stop to pick up people from the area sometimes, so that's kind of cool. The medium income reported for a family was zero in the 2010 census. Holy moonshine, Batman, how are those people paying their internet? Oh, never mind, they can't even get internet in Thurman, which makes it even more secluded. Number nine, Marble Mount, Washington. Christy Clark said Marble Mount, Washington should be on the list. I took a look, I agree. As of the census of 2000, there were 251 people, 93 households, and 59 families residing in Marble Mount. Marble Mount, or M-Town as the locals call it. <laughs> Totally kidding. Nobody has ever said that until just now. Nothing happens in Marble Mount. Their news for the last year has consisted of a wolf pack being spotted near town. The locals are trying to stop a mine from opening up. And like most out of the way towns, a couple guys got arrested for threatening people with firearms. The closest real city is Everett, Washington, about an hour and a half down some mountain roads that get kind of dangerous in the winter. And before you do, stop typing. If you're from the area, I am sure that you are an expert driver and you drive them all the time and you're amazing. Mario Andretti used to call you for advice. I get it. I watched a YouTube video about the area and they were saying some of the locals get snowed in for weeks at a time in the winter. And that kind of makes those people even more secluded. Marble Mount isn't far from Concrete Washington, which is somewhat famous for two things. Author Tobias Wolf attended Concrete High School and during the War of the Worlds radio broadcast in 1938, they had a power outage at the worst possible time. People all over the country thought that the radio show was was actually a news report of an alien invasion. They thought it was real. A few minutes before they announced it wasn't real, a transformer blew and the town went dark. This is a radio show, so people just couldn't, you know, figure it out. These people freaked out. Some even went and hid in the woods for weeks before they realized it was okay to come out. Number eight, Hepner, Oregon. Aaron Henshaw told us about Hepner, Oregon. Hepner, Oregon is in a part of Oregon that Oregonians would like Idaho to take off our hands, like some Louisiana purchase thing. We'll give Eastern Oregon to them for some rugs, beads, and I don't know, a badminton court with a hedge, a multi-level hedge thing, you know. 
Make it nice, you know, landscaping. Anyway, Hepner sits at the base of the Willow Creek Reservoir Dam. I've always marveled at people that build homes, essentially in the wash plain, for a dam. If the dam breaks, they will have to change the name from the Willow Creek Reservoir to the Sunken City Lake or something like that. This place makes the local insurance company cry every time someone mentions the word earthquake. Hepner is about a three-hour drive east of Portland and really other than LaGrand and Pendleton's kind of there, but those are just... The Pendleton's like a really small town and LeGrand's nothing special. Those are off to even further to the east, which nobody goes to. So yeah, Hepner, Oregon is secluded. Number seven, Charlotte, Iowa. Charles Merrick told us about Charlotte, Iowa with its 398 residents. That was in the 2010 census. Since then, they've misplaced about 40 people and they're not really sure where. I think they probably lost them in a cornfield or something. Charlotte was incorporated in 1904. A post office had already been established there since 1853. The town was named for the first postmaster's wife, Charlotte Gilmore. How sweet is that? My cousin actually named his car after his ex-wife. He calls that Pontiac Aztec the Swamp Witch. Charlotte is almost an hour away from the nearest city, which is Davenport. If you've ever been to Davenport, you know it's not much of a city. So really, they're even further away from civilization. Number six, Wilton, Wisconsin. Phoenix Cat Thug said Wilton, Wisconsin should be on the list. Wilton is about an hour or so of driving country roads to get to La Crosse, Wisconsin. Wilton was founded sometime in the mid 1800s. I saw three different dates and I couldn't figure out which one it was. I, nobody's got a bead on when this little town started or village. So I just go with mid 1800s. Anyway, it's considered a village because it only has 500 residents. This is the type of place that everybody knows everybody. And of course they gossip about each other at the local diner or American Legion. It's the American way. It's what we do when we live in small towns. You know, they're out there saying things like, hey, don't you know that Anderson girl's been getting that fake tan down at Margie's on Main and meeting up with that boy from Oil City down at the Kickapoo, don't you know? Now, I know that sounds funny to most of you. What's really funny is that those places are real, including the Kickapoo River that flows right by town. Oil City is right down the road, and you can get a fake tan at Margie's on Main. I, I'm sure they do great work there. And if there is any young lady in Wilton named Anderson, I'm sorry, I just picked out a random name. I don't want to spread any rumors about you and make you look like the town tramp or anything like that. As I say this, I realize that Anderson is one of the most common names in Minnesota and Wisconsin, so the chances of there being a young lady named Anderson in Wilton are very high. I apologize. I know nobody from Wilton, and I've heard no rumors about any young lady down at the Kickapoo. Number five, Glen Rio, New Mexico and Texas. In this day and age is the name of this YouTube channel and they suggested we look at Atlanta, Louisiana and Glen Rio, New Mexico and Texas. You gotta go with the place that's in two states, right? Glen Rio isn't a big town or village for that matter. The community was founded in 1903 as a railroad siding on the Rock Island Railroad. Its name is derived from the Scots word Glen and the Spanish word Rio. I guess a lot of Scots and a lot of Mexicans were working on that rail at the time. It's a good thing that there's only one resident living here. Could you imagine the problems you'd have if you were living in a town that's split down the middle by two states and there's teenagers living there? Texas and New Mexico have different ages of consent. Could you imagine the problems you can get into because your girlfriend came over to your house in Texas or something? Strange. Glen Rio is a little over an hour away from Amarillo, Texas, and there's almost nothing in between the two towns. There's a little town called Vega, but it's really not much of a town. Going into New Mexico, the western direction, there really isn't anything except Tucumcari, which there's tons of jokes that go with Tucumcari, and I'm not even going to get into them. Glen Rio even has a visitor center that doubles as a rest stop. Why? What are people coming to visit for? Has anyone ever visited here? I mean, other than to have to use the restroom? Number four, Deer, Arkansas. Rebecca Swilling thought Deer, Arkansas was worthy of our list. Looks like it is. Deer is an unincorporated community in Newton County, Arkansas. It only has 800 residents and it's within the Ozark National Forest. The nearest town is Harrison with its 12,000 residents about an hour drive on Arkansas 7. The good news is the Arkansas 7 isn't a dirt road like most of you assumed. After all, it is Arkansas. It's safe to assume that it would be a dirt road, but it is paved, at least most of it. Watch out for potholes and exploding moonshine stills and you'll be okay. There's also a big thing here of running into deer. It isn't actually in a national forest so be prepared for that. Running into deer and hillbillies. They wander out onto the road occasionally. Number three, Haynes, Alaska. Toby wanted us to know about Haynes, Alaska. Haynes is in the middle of a peninsula on the Chinook Inlet, which is part of the Alaskan Inside Passage. That means nothing to anybody unless you're from the area or have taken an Alaskan cruise. You'll hear about it all the time on the cruises, which 
I'm going on one in April and I will give you plenty of pictures and video. Haynes has 1,700 residents and if you want to drive to the nearest city, it's in Canada and it's about a five hour drive away. They've got a couple little villages between there and the city, but yeah. The nearest American town is Skagway and that's about an hour and a half boat ride or it's like a 10 hour drive if you want to drive your car. The funnest thing to do here is drink, look at bald eagles, and wave at passing cruise ships while you drink or drink and look at bald eagles and cruise ships at the same time. That's actually possible there. Or you could just drink and sit in the woods and stare at trees. That's also a lot of fun. Sometimes you could go out and dip your toes in the water for a few seconds. Not much longer than that because the ocean is freezing there. Literally, like little miniature icebergs. I know they're not called icebergs, but little chunks of ice float by there on a regular basis. It's weird. And you can do that while you're drinking too. Number two, Atlanta, Idaho. Dan Carlin tipped us off to Atlanta, Idaho. It was founded in 1864 during the Civil War as a gold and silver mining community and named by Southerners after they heard a rumor of a Confederate victory over General Sherman in the Battle of Atlanta, which turned out to be completely wrong. Sherman actually marched right through Atlanta and set the place on fire, but the name stuck. The closest city is Boise, and that's about three and a half hours of mountain road driving, so good luck with that, especially during the winter. Atlanta has less than 300 people in the village itself and the surrounding area. They don't have much going on here except for the river and whoa hold on a second do they really have a beaver lodge? I need to go here. And number one, Tangier Island, Virginia. Kevin Dean told us about Tangier Island, Virginia. 90 miles south of Washington, D.C., you have the tiny fishing community on Tangier Island. The population was 727 at the 2010 census. Right now, they figure it's closer to about 600. The people who came to settle the island permanently arrived in 1770, and they're farmers. In the late 19th century, the island became more dependent on harvesting crabs and oysters from the Chesapeake Bay. Tangier Island is located 18 miles offshore in the Chesapeake Bay, and it is sinking. It probably will be completely underwater within the next 25 to 50 years unless they get a seawall because of rising sea levels and erosion and things like that. It's just going to be gone soon. Well, soon. I mean, 50 years is soon to you. I mean, 50 years is soon to a turtle, but maybe not to most humans. I don't know. This place is so secluded, it even has its own very distinct accent. Really, you should watch a video on it. It's pretty interesting. Because of it being so isolated, most of the island residents can trace their lineage back to when it was a colonial outpost. That's interesting. Tangier is a very secluded location, and it is number one on this list. All right, everyone, so that's my top 10 most secluded locations. Third video, it's the subscriber version. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you got some information out of it. Don't forget all the links below. Buy a t-shirt. Subscribe if you already haven't. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.